I'm good. Welcome everyone to the Wolf Den podcast, the only podcast of the Wolf Den. <laughs> Didn't have anything else to do. You're right about that. Yes. When you're that right, is a you're factual right. Factual statement. Yeah. I'm, I'm always right. I have a hashtag for it. I might have botched that intro a little bit, but we'll pretend like it was we'll pretend like you could hear everything that yeah. whole time. <laughs> I uh, hope you're all doing well on this Tuesday while we're yes. recording this. Uh, a lot's been going on. We have a big list of things to talk about here. Um, we were just talking about uh, coffee grinders. We sure were. I forgot why. Because uh, uh, we were talking about you made cold brew out of that uh, barrel-aged coffee I got you. I did. And uh, you had mentioned that your grinder was broken. I sent you a Kickstarter. It, it's page. it's the old uh, garbage grinder that I used to have. That I I right. I it broke because I put chocolate in it because I didn't care if it broke because <laughs> it was a garbage right. grinder. <laughs> and then yes, you sent me a Kickstarter for this thing. I don't. It, it's a it's a combination, uh, manual and electric. I mean, this thing looks great, but right, I don't buy it. I don't buy Well, it. so apparently this Kickstarter, you can buy just the hand grinder or you can get both. And both is $350. Okay, that's that yeah. makes more sense. Uh, I I mean, the whole point is getting both. It's the whole thing. Right. But, right. Can, but does it do espresso? Some of these things don't go small enough to do espresso. Oh, I... Maybe I mean this one looks like it could, because it's fancy and on Kickstarter and whatnot. I mean it looks fancy. Oh, here we go, espresso, but, full full grind range, a grind for every brew method from ibric to cold brew, and at the reach of your hand with a never before seen ease of grind a uh, uh, adjustability. I need to see a James uh, Hoffman video on this, or else I'll buy it. <laughs> That's what you need. Uh, you need a conical burr grinder for the good stuff. Right. Well, that's the whole. That's you know all the well all the for sno- comparison. All the snobby people get that because I accidentally got myself an America's Test Kitchen subscription. Uh, what the hell's wrong with you? I, a lot, a lot is wrong with me. But they recommend their grinder of choice is the Krupp's Coffee and Spice Grinder, which is eighteen bucks. <laughs> I don't. That's another one I don't buy. I don't buy that. <laughs> <laughs> you have to spend a lot of money on you have to spend a lot of money on a grinder you have to or else or else you're doing it wrong <laughs> <laughs> look man i've seen enough america's test kitchen to know that they buy like 30 of the one product and just test it for 24 hours straight for like an entire month so i don't know i don't know what you want from me no i like that stuff that's the stuff that i like i like stuff like america's test kitchen because it's like you know snobs who are like into the the, yeah. um, the 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 they're they're too far into it they will say no you got to spend three hundred dollars to get a nice grinder yeah but if you're just starting out like i bought a crappy grinder when i when i yeah. first got into coffee because i didn't know if i wanted to get that far into it you know yeah so somebody's got to be out there to be like don't listen to these guys just get this one and then when you're ready you can get the million dollar one yeah Anyway, uh, we're supposed to be talking about video games. Uh, J oh, Flem. really? I thought we transitioned to <laughs> coffee. J Flem with the 17 months. Thank you very much. Razzle Jazzled with four months. Eric Henley with 36. Red Wolf standing by. Uh, Star Wars thing? Or are you it's making Star fun Wars, of my yeah. red sweater? What's going on? And uh, Radius, thank you for the two months. I love all of you equally. Not true. I love <laughs> some of you more than I love others. Yeah. Guys, we're here to talk about the New York Times. They posted an article and everybody's mad about it. Yeah. yeah are you Bob, surprised? Are you, are you kidding me? Did you know that people are playing video games <gasps> while they're stuck inside with nothing uh... else to do? Children's screen time has soared in the pandemic, alarming parents and researchers. Researchers are like shocked Pikachu face. Yeah. 
There will be a period of epic withdrawal, warned one addiction specialist, once schools, activities, and social life return to normal. You know, like when the summer happens and then you go back yeah. to school and you're like, I don't want to be here. My whole uh, high school career was, I guess, withdrawals in that case. Yeah. I did not want to be at school. I slept in class, didn't do my homework, got yelled at all the yeah. time. No, it was, it was the last place I ever wanted to be. And, you know, I'm I'm currently married to a teacher and a reminder of that every day. <laughs> uh, not saying I turned out great. I'm just saying. Yeah. Look, look where I, we want wound up. I, I sympathize with this child in the middle of this picture. Is that actually yeah. the kid? I think that's just. A, oh, yeah. No, that is the kid. <laughs> this poor kid. S some New York Times photographer went to this person's house. And was like, sit between your parents. Parents look disappointed. Kid, put on your headset and your and yeah. bulb of controller. Make it look like you're gaming and they're mad about it. Are you trying to log into Twitch I, right now? I am. I am. Just yeah. text me the... All right, I'll, I'll text to you. I'm trying to log into Streamlabs because it did something else. You have just a few seconds. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is going to work. I thought I thought we were being hacked for a second. Um <laughs> anyway, I'll read a, I'll read a little bit of this article. The day yeah. after New Year's, John Reichert of Boulder, Colorado had a heated argument with his 14-year-old son James. I've failed you as a father, he told the boy despairingly. I I think you got in, right? Cuz I it just refreshed on yeah, my yeah. side. All right. Um during the long months of lockdowns and shuttered schools, Mr. Riker, like many parents, overlooked the vastly increasing time that his son was spending on video games and social media. Now, James, who used to focus his free time on mountain biking and playing basketball, devotes nearly all of his leisure hours, about 40 a week, to Xbox and his phone. During their argument, he pleaded with his father not to restrict access, calling his phone his, quote, whole life. I'll remind everybody we are in the middle of a global pandemic and <laughs> nobody wants to go outside because there yeah. is death outside. Um, quote, that was the tipping point. His whole life, question mark, said Reichert, a technical ad administrator in the local sheriff's office. Oh, so I was going to say oh. technical administrator. So he knows how important technology is. Local yes. sheriff's office. Oh, so he probably doesn't do much. <laughs> I'm not that's not a that's not a commentary on police that's a commentary on government workers. Yeah. <laughs> Quote, I'm not losing my son to this. Uh nearly a mil nearly a year into the coronavirus pandemic, parents across the country and the world are watching their children slide down an increasingly slippery path into an all-consuming digital life. Uh I mean, aren't we all? Where have you been? Yeah, like why <laughs> yeah, is it limited been, to children? Part of this. Yeah, they like People have been sliding into an all-consuming digital life for years now, not just children. Probably the father, the technical administrator who comes home and reads weird alt-right articles on Facebook. Uh, Eric in the chat, uh, confirmed police officer, says, can confirm desk jockeys don't do shit. <laughs> I feel validated. Um, yeah. Where was I? When the outbreak hit, many parents relaxed restrictions on screens as a stopgap way to keep frustrated, restless children entertained and engaged. But often remaining limits have vaporized as computers, tablets, and phones became the centerpiece of schools and social life, and weeks of stay-at-home rules bled into uh, nearly a year. Well, we didn't know that that's what was going to happen. Yeah. I, I think... Uh, I mean... It's so like par parents are stuck with the kids too, you know? So yeah. like they want a lot of parents want the kids to be occupied, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they want to make it so that, you know, they leave them alone. And like, yeah, being out and like, and, and you know, mountain biking or whatever this kid was doing before is, is important too. Cause yeah. you should have some physical activity. But, uh, I mean, you weren't allowed to do that for a while. Um, anyway, 
The situation is alarming parents and scientists too. There will be a period of epic withdrawal, said Keith Humphreys, a professor of psycholo psychology at St Stanford University, an addiction expert and a former senior advisor to President Barack Obama on drug policy. It will, he said, require young people to, quote, sustain attention in normal interactions without getting a reward hit every few seconds. This is something that I thought about. Like, I mean, the pandemic kind of has us all you know locked in our own homes we haven't like when was the last time you went to like a gathering where you saw those like third party friends that you don't really like you only see them at gatherings maybe like once no, or twice I, a, once every other I, month or something not being not for all 2020 yeah the only way i keep so. up with people like that is via social media you know yeah so it makes it so that like when i do eventually go out into like large gatherings again mm -hmm. it's gonna be weird and like yeah i feel like i'm not the only one it's gonna be weird for everybody you know you, you have you do you ever have that friend that like went away to college and they got all weird they came out of it oh, weird uh, several <laughs> yeah that happens to a lot of people because they get like emboldened yeah. by their new friends or whatever yeah that's gonna happen with this people are gonna come out of this pandemic like completely different people because they uh yeah they didn't have anybody around or or whatever and then and, and they got all weird or they felt self-important and now they go out into into the world and then they i don't know it's gonna be weird it's gonna be a weird little science yeah. experiment but is it this kid's fault <laughs> it's not this kid's fault this is nobody's fault <laughs> you know this is just what the kid is doing the kid is, this kid is not unique and it's not just kids doing it adults a lot of regular ass grown adults are turning to video games and the internet and other like digital media to occupy and entertain themselves while they're stuck at home with nothing to do you can't use the old excuse go out and ride a bike anymore because if the kid goes out and rides a bike he could catch the covid C Kathy or Co she or she Kathy <laughs> coffee in the chat says fuck your dad mountain bike in the kitchen <laughs> <laughs> so I what I've said this before but um, like I haven't seen some of my really close friends in a really long time and mm -hmm. it's I mean obviously it's because of the pandemic but um, I've been able to keep up with them specifically because of video games like yeah. I, I play video games with them every other night, you know, maybe like yeah, two or three times a week. Maybe that's more accurate. Um, and we play for like a really long time. And like that's our way yeah. of hanging out now because it's easier to do that than it is to to go see them or go to a friggin' restaurant where we have to wear a mask the whole time. Yeah. Um, and I know like on my end, we're not specifically playing games together but we're all playing games we're, and we're all talking about the different games that we're playing, or maybe we're playing the same game and we're, you know, talking about our shared experiences with it. It's, it's a way for, for all of us to just stay united as we're, you know, so far apart from each other. I want to know what the solution is for this specific child. Like what is, what does the dad want this kid to do? The, this, <sighs> This reminds me of like well, every like 10 years, there's always an article like this where like, oh, kids are playing too much, too many video games. They're, they're going to become serial rapists or whatever. <laughs> I mean, this stuff dates back to like the NES. You know, yeah. th this is there's nothing new in this article. The only thing that's new is that, you know, everybody's stuck at home. Yeah. You know, it's not just it's not just the kids that are doing it. Like we have to be at home. And this is how they're dealing with it. But I guess this is not how the writer wants these kids to deal with it. Because that's that's if it if the writer was okay with this, the writer of the article was okay with this, they wouldn't have written the article. <laughs> Neon Vexy says the kids should go outside and play with friends and catch COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so our parents used to throw us out of the house and lock the door yes. and be like go play yes. and just go lock play the door outside and be yeah. like get out of here yeah which and the joke was on them because we would spend most of that time trying to break back into the house yes which we did successfully multiple times <laughs> yeah yes um so yeah i guess we played video games way too much and uh yeah again not saying that was the best move <laughs> 
But we well, also we also had social lives, and we we went we had social other, lives. We, we went, went to our friends' houses and played video games there. Yes, we we did other things. Uh, and now it's come full circle because our parents just go on their iPads all the time. Yeah, they just sit on their iPad and watch TV. Yeah, <laughs> and look at the iPad in separate rooms. Yeah. There is always at at minimum four screens on going in the their same house, time. and they're just sprawled out on the couch. Yeah, uh, immovable. Yeah. So. Meanwhile, our dad is like the most physically active. Like, oh um, yeah, wakes up at like nine year old, three in the morning to go run and do a workout and all that crap. But that's his excuse for sitting on the couch for like five hours. Yeah, looking at his iPad and watching TV. Um. So I, I mean, I'm, we're not here to tell you that balance isn't important. I think balance oh, is yeah. important. Oh, no, yeah. Look, in all fairness, you know, it's it's important to, you know, take breaks, to, like, get up, to stretch. Uh, if Look, I mostly spend my days indoors, but sometimes, like, I'll just go hang out in my backyard for, like, a few minutes just to get some fresh air or whatever. Because that, that's important. I clearly do not get any sun. I, right. I, can't, I can't speak. Right. I do not like the outside world. <laughs> I, I basically do. don't leave my my this this little room in the apartment. Yeah. That's all I do. And when I say I go stand in my backyard, what I really mean is just take out the trash. Uh, but I do spend <laughs> a lot of time. I do take my time with it now. I don't try to get it done quickly. The 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 uh, me taking out the trash is me walking about ten feet. Yeah, that's that's so. I really I really don't do anything. Oh no, I, I, I do want... sometimes. I, I do, do want to call attention to this one quote later on uh, down in the article. Uh, where is it? A, di- a dynamic playing out in many families was on display during the interview with the Riker family. 14-year-old James is an only child who started high school this fall and said that because of COVID-19 and distance learning, he didn't have many chances to meet new people. Instead, he hangs out online with his old friends. The only way to talk to them besides going to their house is through my Xbox, he says. Um, we play we play on there every night. He said the games felt so compelling, particularly when they offered achievement incentives. If you play a lot and do well, you can try to max out your rank. That takes up quite a lot of time, he says. But sometimes we just play for fun, which is basically like what we were talking about. It's the best way for him to keep in touch with his friends. Um... You know, they, they're having fun. They're being engaged. I mean, yeah, they they make it sound sinister when he says, like, oh, we crashed. Yeah, yeah. They make it sound sinister when they say um, the games feel compelling, particularly when they offer uh, achievement incentives, because that's, like, the scientific way of, like, talking about how games, like, offer you. I forgot what the technical term is called. It's like it's it it's uh it's a little dopamine rush. That's what it is. Yeah. So, but I mean, that's the, the kid knows what's up. He like and the and the the writer of the article clearly is trying to spin it in a way that makes him sound lost and confused and doesn't know uh what's right and what's wrong. Because what's wrong is playing video games. I believe that's the only time they let the child talk. <laughs> yeah. Most of it is the parents talking about how disappointed they are in their son. Well, and, this is and what then I re- writing a whole freaking article about it. Like this isn't traumatizing enough for that kid. This is what I really wanted to get into because right after that, they yeah, say this is important. The family dog died on New Year's Eve, and James said that playing games with his friends helped him not to think about the loss. This concerned his mother, Kathleen Reichert, who felt that her son was escaping the emotions of real life. What are you going to do when you're married and stressed? Tell your wife that you need to play Xbox? She said to her son during the interview. So, so th- now, wait, this is what now. I saw. Okay. Uh, my my wife uh, is a very private person. She doesn't want to come on camera. But if, if she did, I would call her in here and ask her if I've ever said that to her. And she would say yes. And she would be okay with it because normal human beings are okay with their partners playing video games. Yeah, like, I mean, what's the difference between playing a video game with your friends and just calling them on the phone, you know? Yeah. What's the difference? Or like, you know, 
the, the stereotype of coming home from a hard day at work, sitting down on the couch, having a beer and watching the game, mm-hmm. that's okay. But coming home from a hard day at work and sitting down playing, you know, a round of Halo, oh, that's you can't do that. That means you're antisocial. But when you hear people talking about sports, it sounds a lot like people talking about video games. Especially yeah. if you're talking about online video games and like the meta and stuff. People yeah. talk about sports like that. Oh, this, this this random sports team got a new wide receiver and he's like really good at doing this, but he's not so good at doing this. So I don't know how that's going to mean for the whole team. And people talk about that yeah. video games like that too. So yeah. uh, it's, it, but, but there are, there's some, for some reason, the stigma that it's like bad. It's bad when it's video yeah. games, but it's fine yeah. when it's sports because in sports, there's real people who are, physically carrying out well no those actions in, in sports you know the older generations grew up with sports yes sports <laughs> was always a part of their life video games was not always a part of their life so instead video games is just seen as this toy that children play and once you become a certain age you put away your toys <laughs> um <laughs> That's that's what that is. There's a great there's a great um, Penn and Teller bullshit episode on violent video games, and at the end they ask people to pretend that video games have been around for as long as football, <laughs> and and they say like if that were the case, then we would have schools having video game leagues. There would be college tournaments for video game players. Um, video game players would be you know, and all this commercial and getting deal brands with Nike and whatnot. But then imagine in the late 80s, this new game comes around where kids have to crash into each other physically and it causes them to have broken bones, concussions, um, all these other long-term debilitating injuries. You would never let your kids play this game. But because football has been around for like a thousand years, that's okay. We all grew up with football. So, so first of all, when was that Penn and Teller episode? 2010, I want to say. Because now we have college leagues for video games. True. <laughs> they they like True. they predicted it basically. Right, but the sentiment remains the same. But well, I was also going to bring up, you know, in the 90s when there was that whole movement that, you know, uh for, for the ratings on games and that really soured yes. video games for a lot of uh older people. Right. Which so our parents should have been soured by video games at that time, mm-hmm. but for whatever reason, they didn't. They didn't care about uh, right the the content we consumed for whatever reason. I don't. I don't. I don't we we got Mortal Kombat. We got yeah. all of the Mortal Kombat's. Actually, yeah. I think I think they saw that and they were like, "This is the one that the kids want." So here you go. Yeah, <laughs> which is weird because there was a period of time when mom would not let us watch R-rated movies. I don't remember that, and we were like. In we were like at the age where we probably should have started watching R-rated movies. I don't remember that. I remember you. We would always go to Blockbuster, and I would always want. Uh, we would always get either a video game or a movie, and it, it, I always opted for the video game. But sometimes you would want to get a movie, and it was always a horror movie. Yeah. Well, um, I I say that because I specifically remember I wanted to rent. I think it was the South Park movie, and Mom said no because it was rated R. And then I found out you had watched, she had let you watch Deuce Bigelow with your current roommate, and I pitched a fit. I don't remember that at all. I Because, like, that's that's bullshit. You let him watch that. It's rated R. No, I can't watch the South Park movie. It's no. because the South no. Park movie was, like, way over the top. True, but, I mean, I don't care. It's the, it's the principle of the thing. Um... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I guess because my, our parents might have been on the side that like uh, video games are a kids' thing. So how bad could it be? Meanwhile, we yeah. had they they got us Duke Nukem. They, they got us yeah. all the Mortal Kombat's. They got us South Park games, or uh, I guess we rented them. We rented them. Conquer's Bad Fur Day, which I mean is like the easiest. Like, uh, yeah. like it's a squirrel. How bad could it be? Yeah. <laughs> but whatever. I mean, I, also. Uh, in like you know middle school high school uh, i spent long stretches of time playing games online with my friends playing like rainbow six and stuff and unreal tournament stuff uh that i should have probably been outside for 
but i yeah. also spend time outside uh you know doing degenerate stuff yeah um so i mean anyway what are we talking about <laughs> uh yeah this was the only part that they let the kid talk about and he had a traumatic experience where the family dog died so he's yeah. using video games as a coping mechanism how about we like you, we, how about we tackle the trauma instead of yeah. shaming the kid into how he's coping with it you know what i mean yeah also again we're in a pandemic what is this yeah. freaking kid supposed to do I'm, I'm sure his parents are not doing anything too dissimilar i'm sure the dad is watching you know sports and i'm sure the mom is watching i don't know whatever the mom watches what, what do what do moms watch <laughs> uh hgtv and the food yes. network yeah so probably that uh, before the pandemic, James had so many options, she said, the mom said, adding, now it makes me feel badly when I try to restrict him. It's his only socialization. And that's how the article ends. That's... <sighs> so so basically, they don't have a solution. Basically, they, no. they, this whole article is about, this is what's happening to kids. They 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 can't socialize, so they're doing it online. And like... And that's, parents are doing that too. All your freaking Zoom meetings where you got your glasses at the tip of your nose and you're filming your chin. That makes it... And that's why I'm I'm really like mad at this writer because that makes it sound sounds like this, this is more dangerous. This is more helpless than the actual pandemic that's going on. Yeah. The real pandemic is the scourge of video games. What are we to do? I don't think there's anything we can do. Oh, no. I'm seeing a lot of like articles from like uh, the New York Times and like Washington Post and stuff mm -hmm. that are like talking that like the head that like people are you like anti vaxxers are using them as ammo. Like, look, it's killing people in old folks' homes. Look, here's proof. Yeah. And then there's like a line in the article, like a very tiny line that'll say, like, uh, other studies have proven the opposite. Yeah. And it's like, then why would you? give them the ammo Lead if you with disprove that. it, it <laughs> buried yeah. in the article and this reads like one of those i mean that's obviously a yeah. very extreme example but this is like <laughs> one of those like maybe you should have some differing opinions in there you know what i mean yeah like maybe you should like maybe sympathize with this for with this poor 14 year old kid instead you have the outraged adults who also have no life uh yeah <laughs> going in here and trying to uh trying to put in their two cents like kotaku here new york times is worried kids are playing video games too much during the pandemic now that is a great headline that that sums yeah. it all up pretty beautifully basically yeah uh i'm not reading this but the guy was the, yeah. this, i know that this guy was very mad yeah i i basically put this in here because because new york times is one of those newspaper websites that might restrict you because you have to like have a subscription to read the articles and that garbage right um, but I thought this was a nice summary of uh, what they what they were talking about. It is pretty short. Yeah. Sh shall we read it? I mean, we don't have to. I mean, it's short because the, there's nothing to the New York Times article. It's just a bunch of nonsense about <laughs> oh, kids kids in their games. Oh, here we go. The whole post is oddly bookended by a random small family that is currently struggling during the pandemic. Their son plays a lot of video games as a way to connect with his friends. His father and his and mother are con concerned about how much time he spends in front of the screen, but also know it's one of the few ways he has to safely socialize while COVID-19 runs wild across the country. I'll note that I played a lot of video games as a child and never did my homework and that's why i can't read this is a hard <laughs> situation i imagine many parents around the globe are going through right now but highlighting only kids and how much screen time they are using ignores that all of us not just children and teens are dealing with increased screen time and a lack of real human interaction instead the article goes on and on about how potentially unhealthy and dangerous all this screen time could be for kids how kids need to disconnect more how kids are playing too much roblox and there's a picture of roblox that makes it look way cooler than the game looks yeah so like uh, that's the thing is that it makes it look like kids you're doing it wrong you're being bad you're playing too many yeah. video games and that's bad 
I'm going to go play video games now. It's like, it's like yeah. you're shaming the kids for doing something and you don't have a solution for them. And it, it's, it's like you're basically yelling at them for no reason. It's, it's, it's a, it's, it's setting a bad yeah. precedent, you know, like, like they didn't do anything wrong. They, 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 yeah. This is all they have, you know? And that, that's what, that's where the whole problem is. Like, yeah. like if, if it, if there wasn't a pandemic, then yeah, tell the kid to go outside. Like, I understand. Yeah. But, uh, there's a freaking pandemic. What do you want them to do? Yeah. So, I mean, y- yes, Get it is trend, up to though. you as know. a parent. Yeah. It is up to you as a parent to set, you know, the, the kid needs to have study time and, you know, maybe, you know, do something other than playing video games. It's not healthy to play video games for 12 hours straight every single day. But that said, if the little bastard wants to play video games, let the little bastard play video games. It's it's not going to ruin his life. What is he supposed to do? Study? Yeah. On yeah. his on his computer? <laughs> <laughs> I'll note that you aren't letting your child uh, look at screens for a while. Well, that's that's different because well, for, she's a baby, she can't do anything yet. But also <laughs> to <laughs> she can't do anything. Uh, she's useless right now. Yeah. That that's more of like because, you know, the first two years of her life, that's like when you know brains are most susceptible to like, you know, developmental issues, and like that's when, you know, they're developing the most. So keeping her away from screens as much as possible now to basically mitigate any lasting effects in the future. That said, once she's old enough to like properly watch TV, I'll let her watch TV. I don't. It's fine as long as there's, there's not two people fucking. I don't care. Uh, we got Marimba Pirate in the dough with 20 months. Thank you very much. We got Thank Dante you. Mira with a hundo bits. We got Zero X Geek with two months of Prime subs. We got Caffey Coffee with a Prime sub, with a regular sub, actually. We got Hare gifting a sub to Guitar335. Thank you. Appreciate you. We got, uh, Bardo Zatsk with a Prime sub. It's your fault for having that name. It's not my reading comprehension, I swear. <laughs> and underscore with 37 months. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, also of note here, if you guys subscribe to this channel on Twitch, hello, thank you. Uh, you can link your Twitch account to your Discord, discord.gg slash wolfden. And you can get into the supporter only, the secret supporter only Discord channel where I post videos a few hours early. So you can watch a video a few hours early if you're a supporter. Little little perk for you. You don't just get to throw your money over here. Uh, there's uh, we got more news. Yeah, we cool. got actual news. <laughs> we're done uh, defending kids for. Yeah, we're done behavior. with that liberal liberal rag, the New York slimes. <laughs> <laughs> I found this like seconds before we we went live. I didn't even know this was happening. Uh, it was posted today at... Yeah. It says 10.20 p.m. Maybe this is a European website? It must be a European website. A Zelda 64 beta version has been discovered and fans are pulling it apart. I haven't even read this. I just saw the headline and I was like, oh, damn, look at that. That looks beautiful. Yeah. A group of video game preservationists have discovered a partial beta version of Nintendo 64 classic, The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. The Forest of Illusion Twitter account, they're good, they're great, we love them, said it discovered the beta ROM left over on an old development cartridge it had acquired. According to the group, the dev cart primarily contained Nintendo Racer F-Zero-X, but it was discovered that it had been flashed and originally housed an early demo of the N64 Zelda. Excuse me? What? So wait, it originally contained F-Zero, but it was discovered that it had been reflashed and originally housed so if it had been flashed, how do they know it had let's, let's, Zelda on let's it? Let's see if they get to that, because that's weird. About half of the original Ocarina of Time ROM said to have been intended for Nintendo's 1997 Space World show is claimed to have been found on the cart. 
Forest yeah. of Illusion shared the contents online on Tuesday, and fans have already been able to recover a significant amount of new information about the pre-release version, including new areas, redesi redesigned items, and other elements that never made it into the final build. The beta and unused items include early versions of the Lens of Truth. Remember that, Will? From yep. Oh, yeah. And spiritual stones. Oh, and a oh. landmine that's reminiscent of Mario Kart's blue shell or Bowser's <laughs> shell. What the hell? Also shown off are all the powers of the bow. Uh, powers for the bow, some of which didn't make the final cut. The grass that Link would use to summon Epona instead of utilizing the ocarina, as you did in the retail version of the game. Plus, several music note items. Originally, Link would hold one of these notes above his head each time he used a song to correspond to that piece of music. That would be lame. That would be very lame. And then we have a whole bunch of tweets. I guess we'll yeah. look at these tweets right now. Uh, Shane Bite says, Shane Bat, 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 how do you say that? Uh, Shane Batty. Wow, huge discovery for Zelda Ocarina of Time fans. Pre or around Space World 97 version hidden in the overdump of an F-Zero cart. So, like, it sounds like they recovered, like they did a recovery on the... On yeah. The, maybe, maybe there was some... Maybe there was something on the cartridge that, like, tipped them off. Like, they left a sticker on that said, like, Ocarina of Time yeah. or something. Um, so, like, when you... I mean, it's harder to do a recovery on on a on a what's it called? Uh, like solid state memory, you know? Yeah. So like, um, this 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 means that the F zero cart didn't take up. I mean, I guess it only took up half of of the cartridge, and yeah. the other the, half the was, other half still had Zelda stuff on it. Yeah, it wasn't completely erased, which is like amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyway, uh, here it is. Here's some unused uh, UI assets. And there's the music notes he would hold over his head. Yeah. And there's the cartridge. F-Zero crossed out. Yeah, I don't know how they would know that it had Zelda stuff on it. That's crazy. They, they had definitely had to go into the ROM itself and like poke around in it. Like what would They're it make them just... think to do a recovery like that, you know? I mean, I mean, it is a development uh, prototype for F Zero. They were probably looking for F Zero stuff. I see true. what was left on the on the beta, and they were like, "Oh, this is Zelda stuff." That's a good point. Maybe they were yeah. hoping to see like some deleted F Zero stuff. Yeah. Force of Illusion says we have a prototype in the Nintendo 64 cartridge of F Zero X that contained data from an early build of Zelda 64 that used to be on the cartridge. We're estimating it's from Space World 1997. We're going to look into this more. Of course, everything will be released. That's from Forest of Illusion. Here's some uh, real jank looking uh, like texture files and stuff. There's a ton of leftover graphics, maps, etc. About half of this build is able to be recovered, which is insane. And this is the picture of like where you start. Is it? Well, that looks like a bar or something. Weird. That's a piece. Yeah, no, I think that's a piece yeah. right there. <laughs> More texture stuff. It's now released. Go nuts. Can you just freaking get the ROM? <gasps> I just it just downloads the zip. Oh wow. wow! Are we doing this right now? I guess so. Oh, this is Blood the maps. Up. This is maps right now. Oh. Uh, uh, read me. Here's maps available from this early Zelda build, which was partially overridden by F Zero X. While we may not have the entire build, we can at least explore early Hyrule. Keep in mind that this is only this only split map files that use the final game's map header format. Really early maps didn't get split properly. For example, map ninety five. You you getting all this well? It has oh, yeah. the inside of Link's Kokiri home. But there's an early map right after that. Uses some early header. Those were not split. These will likely each need a scene file, but with 
collision to load in game the actor lists are also likely inc incompatible with the final game when injected good luck injecting in the final game okay well okay it's just map files okay so uh i don't know i i, I would assume very soon someone will make a rom that has all of this injected into it already or at least at least a, oh, yeah. a, a patch file that you can inject your own ocarina at a time a, or a, yeah like a playable version of the beta as it was intended um by the developers at this state so they said it looked like it was supposed to be for space world we i mean when 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 luigi was discovered in mario 64 it was like hours until uh that was yeah. put in actual uh Mar uh, you know Mario 64 to, to be yeah to be playable um and then here's more maps and stuff that looks like a freaking quake map <laughs> it's weird yeah that might be the fire temple did we not have stuff like this in the last like big Nintendo leak this all looks I, I don't I don't remember Zelda specifically or Ocarina of Time I, rather. I, I thought there was Ocarina of Time stuff yeah. You know, that was like around the time of the Luigi leak. Yeah. Um fans also discovered text for the many cut equipable uh, medallions originally intended for the game. The soul medallion would allow players to transform into the fairy Navi and fly around the environment. The light medallion allowed players to use an attack similar to light arrows in the final game. Finally, the dark medallion allowed Link to stop enemies from seeing him. In addition, the beta files reveal significant differences to the structure of the game's story. One section of translated text suggests that originally Princess Zelda would have had Link gather the spiritual stones while she researched how to enter the Temple of Time in the Royal Library. You know, basically making Zelda useful. Yeah. Um, <laughs> The text also suggests that originally Nintendo intended to include in areas at Zora's Domain and Lon Lon Ranch while Gerudo bandits and not monsters roamed Hyrule Field at night. I just said Zelda wasn't useful. Wasn't she friggin' uh she was uh Sheik. Uh, Sheik. Yeah. What was she what was Sheik doing the whole time? But that's like uh, old Zelda. I, Isn't that old Zelda? Sheik? Yeah, that's old Zelda. So what was she doing before that? The whole time she's just moving I don't, around. I don't know. I didn't, dude. I I never get more than halfway through that game. <laughs> I'm making a pact that I'm going to beat that game this year on Twitch.tv slash Wolf Den. <laughs> uh, I would I would like to see that. <laughs> Nick T official says, don't forget, we've also gotten those Pokemon Gold and Silver Space World demos. I could see something playable coming out from that. That's That That was in the last Pokemon. I mean, the last uh, Nintendo dump, wasn't it? No, yes. no, that was the Game Freak. That was a Game Freak leak. Uh, that was that was different. Uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Edible Jim Sock says, we need more useful Zelda in games. I hope she's just straight up playable in the next one. There's there's no reason for her not to be. <laughs> yeah, like it, the, her, I, her name is the game. I feel like they would have like a female Link before Zelda is playable. I don't know. I don't know about that. Well, because they made Linkle. So, true, true. I feel like that was the step to adding a, a girl link. You know what I want? I want the Breath of the Wild concept where he's like an 80s dude with like, you know, a guitar yes. and a jacket. And, and like a motorcycle. motorcycle. Yeah. That's what I want. I want. That. Yeah. No one else would like that. <laughs> but no. I want, I, that will, I would be stoked to play that. Yeah. Um, ooh. What is this one? Amazed how this early Lake Hylia survived this long. What is this? Oh, that's just a random villager. Interesting. Wow. Link has seen better days. <laughs> yeah. His eyes are like so close to each other. 
All right, that's it. You can look at this yourself. All I right. will I will put the link in the chat. Uh there's a lot here. Uh that I would be really excited about if I played more Ocarina of Time. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't uh relate that well. I'm not as excited about this as I was about Luigi being in Mario 64. Uh we got Rock and Val gifting us up to pork chop. Thank you. And we got the Cyberquake hosting us. Thank you, Cyberquake. Um, next, we got Ubisoft is making a Star Wars game. Oh, yeah. Her but also, oh, no, because <laughs> uh, it's Ubisoft. Uh, today, th that would be January, 20, uh, January 13th, uh, Lucasfilm Games announced that it will be entering a partnership with Ubisoft to create an open world Star Wars game. The title will be developed by Ubisoft's massive entertainment, making the first time that a company outside of EA has produced a Star Wars game since Disney acquired Lucasfilm in 2012, ending nearly eight years of, ex of exclusivity. Also, also in the works is a new Indiana Jones game to be developed by Bethesda Game Studios, a newcomer to Lucasfilm's and Disney's properties. Uh, let's start with Star Wars. Development on this new title is still very early. Massive is still recruiting for the project. Even, Massive is still recruiting for the project, uh, so details are sparse. Julian Girati, uh, director of The Division 2 and the crew, will serve as the game's creative director, and the title will use Massive's Snowdrop engine. No. Beyond that, Lucasfilm, <laughs> Lucasfilm Games hasn't revealed anything about <laughs> characters and settings within the Star Wars universe that the game will feature. This announcement follows yesterday's news that Lucasfilm is partnering with Beth with Bethesda to create an Indiana Jones title and the first non-Star Wars AAA game out of Lucasfilm in years. The move marks a seismic shift for Lucasfilm's approach to gaming, widening the tent for developers that want to create games using Lucasfilm franchises, particularly in the Star Wars universe. Uh, EA had previously suggested that the company would have exclusivity on Star Wars games for 10 years, while EA will keep making games in the future, Lucasfilm is free to seek out other partners. It is also possible, even likely, that upcoming Ubisoft Star Wars game will launch after EA's exclusivity agreement ends in about two more years. After, this, after the story was initially published, an EA spokesperson reached out to Wired to provide the following statement. We are proud of our longstanding collaboration with Lucasfilm Games, which will continue for years to come. Our talented teams have created some of the most successful games in the history of Star Wars, including Jedi Fallen Order, Battlefront 1 and 2, Galaxy of Heroes, and Squadrons. We love Star Wars. We look forward to creating more exciting experiences for players to enjoy. Um, and then it goes into like the history of closing down LucasArts, EA having the exclusivity deal that people hated, and now that seems like no longer a thing so we talked about this a little bit last week um uh -huh. i know i know uh, will wasn't here and i know he has a lot to say <laughs> but yeah i do but uh last week we discovered that uh uh disney create so lucas so i didn't so i didn't put this in the keep because i didn't think this was that big of a deal basically Disney just rebranded whatever was left of LucasArts as Lucasfilm Games. Yes. And it was going to be a much bigger, that was a have a more active role in game development. So we figured that out last week after we read about the Indiana Jones game. That was like, right. a, that was like a line in the bottom that like uh, Lucas, LucasArts is, was just given new life as Lucasfilm yeah. Games. And that's a huge freaking deal. It is. It, I guess it's a bigger deal than I initially thought it was. Because after Indiana Jones, they announced Indiana Jones, then they announced that Ubisoft is going to start making Star Wars games. Um, again, not for another two years because EA's exclusivity deal is still in play. Um, but if that's the case, then that's just another step in expanding, you know, not just Star Wars, but the, the greater Lucasfilm portfolio. Because you know, Lu Lucasfilm is not just Star Wars and Indiana Jones. There's a couple of other things in there. Um, 80s kids will remember Willow. <laughs> and that's about it. Um, but in terms of games, they also did Maniac Mansion, Day of the Tentacle, Grim Fandango, Full Throttle. Um, they have other properties to them. Um, so this just means that there could be Monkey a revival. Sam, 
Sam and Mac, yeah, Monkey Island. So this could lead to a bigger revival of those franchises as well. Um, or even brand new franchises out of Lucasfilm. So, yeah, so so, so we learned that... Uh, last week we learned that uh, they made Lucas film games and they're going to be working on an Indiana Jones game, which is a huge deal because they haven't made yes. an Indiana Jones game in a really long time. Uh, yes. But that opened the door for potential Star Wars stuff. But we were like, I mean, EA still got the 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 franchise. Maybe they're going to put a stranglehold on it for a, for a little while yeah. longer, but maybe they're setting it up so that they can do something else. And here we have them being like, <laughs> all right, EA, you done you're, fucked you're up for notice. a long time. Yeah. So we're going to give ubisoft the chance <laughs> yeah of all people uh yeah well so, they they announced it again they announced it before ea's deal has ended right but i guess that's so, because it's it's going to be common knowledge that there is a star wars game like they, they can't really hide that ubisoft yeah. is working on a star wars game so uh they just can't release it for another two years until ea's contract is up which i guess makes sense yeah, that's what yeah. I think that's said. I think that's the way they're working. Yeah, they're they're making it, but they can't release it. Yeah, that 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 makes sense. It, it also yeah. is like telling EA, all right, you, you, there's no shot. You're keeping this exclusivity. We're giving it yeah. away to other people, and rightfully so. EA really, I think, dropped the ball on on Star Wars. They, I mean, they made good Star Wars games. People really like. They did the make Fallen good Star Order. Wars games, but the two Battlefront games were really, really poorly. Put that they were really poorly released mm -hmm. overall, um, and ultimately led to bad products. They had all these other interesting games in development that they just canceled for reasons that you know it, it's their fault they were canceled for doing things like um, making them work with Frostbite, which is a notoriously difficult engine to use, or putting these ridiculous um, timelines in place where they can't make their goals on certain in certain respects um and things like that uh yeah and then 10 i mean 10 years we got four games five if you want to include galaxy heroes that's not bad in the grand scheme of things when you look at modern AAA game development but i think we just expected more out of star wars and ea and the fact that right out the gate they released battlefront one which is a multiplayer only game and to get the most of it you had to pay for a DLC that was just as expensive as the base game. And then they followed that up with Battlefield 2, Battlefront 2, which was, you know, the whole loot crate fiasco. I mean, S Star Wars has had, it's a franchise that's had some of the best video games. Like, like when, when yes. I think about Star Wars, I, I, I don't just think about the movies, I think about the video games too, because there's been yeah. amazing video games throughout our whole, our whole lives. Um, yeah. And that immediately stopped with the Disney acquisition. <laughs> that there was, it was put on. The brakes were put well, on right then. Well, Lucas Lucas Arts was already in decline because they were they were also canceling games left and right. They canceled the original Battlefront Three. They canceled a, a spiritual successor. Lucas Arts uh, point and click games. I think it was called Full Assault. They canceled a Rogue Squadron revival. Um, Star uh, The Force Unleashed Two was abysmal. Um, and they they were just like screwing up left and right. Thirteen thirteen famously got canceled. Um, but that was after Disney bought them. Um, I think D Disney was more about trying to figure out what to do with video games company wide, not just with Lucas with Lucas Arts, because that was around the same era of like Epic Mickey um, and Split Second and all these other like games that they were making that weren't really like hitting the mark. Mm -hmm. So they ha they were like on a company on an entire company level refigure restructuring how they deal with video games. And part of you know unfortunately LucasArts got, you know, caught up in that. But I think ultimately it would be better for it, you know, rather, you know, just giving it to people who know how to make video games already rather than trying to figure out how to do it themselves. I I mean, there must have been a lot of money involved to get specifically EA involved like ea with ea yeah. probably gave them like a really there was probably a really good deal going on that they had to go oh, with yeah. ea and disney's yeah. probably like i mean it's ea they got a lot of money they're one of the biggest video game companies in the world yeah. so i mean yeah how bad could this be <laughs> they, 
they're not looking at it from a fan perspective. They're looking at it like, no. all right, they're going to make like a game. business perspective. Yeah, it's the same thing with Ubisoft. Ubisoft is like you know right under EA there. Uh, yeah. Someone in the chat before said uh, there's going to be uh, storm climb stormtrooper towers to unlock more of the map. You know that sort of thing. Yeah, oh. that's why I'm like, yeah, I guess because like yeah, somebody else is going to be making Star Wars games for a while. Um, that'll be nice. Um, but it's Ubisoft. And for the past like 10 years, every Ubisoft game is exactly the same. Every single one. Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, The Division, um, Watch Dogs, all the same. You just yeah. use big open worlds. You climb towers to unlock more of the map. Um, and you, all these other, you got uh, raid bases and, you know, tower defense crap. I haven't played a Ubisoft game in a really long time because of that. Because they I don't think I played the same one. Way. I don't think I played one this entire generation. Now that I think about it, not true. Far Cry Four. That might have been the last. Because you know what? I played that game already when it was Far Cry Three. <laughs> I actually played Far Cry Five, and you know what? I burnt out real quick because it was yeah. just like Far Cry Four and Far Cry Three. Yeah. Um, I I was really hyped on the division, but I was very quickly disappointed by the division yeah. because it just didn't it just didn't work. Well, the I'm, team behind the division is making this game. That's why I'm so upset. I'm yeah. I talk every time I bring up Ubisoft, I feel like I bring up the division and why I didn't like it, and it probably triggers a lot of people because people liked the division. I don't understand why there wasn't more outrage about how broken the division was because you just can't play with friends. It's just impossible. Yeah, because. <laughs> whoever's the higher level that's the level that the enemies are and the right. way that the enemies scaled if you were one level below me it was almost unplayable so if you're right. two levels below me or three levels be below me you i can't play your missions and you can't play my missions so what are we even doing making this a multiplayer game yeah it was ridiculous and it ruined the game and th that's just how it was and everybody was fine with it it was amazing. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, look, Destiny did it fine. They had scaling. They had enemy scaling. Yeah. And different missions had different levels. I don't know. It makes me very mad. And uh, obviously, yeah. the Division also suffered from the same Ubisoft stuff that is in every Ubisoft game. Yeah. Um, it, the combat felt like Watch Dogs, which felt like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. So I actually liked the first Watch Dogs, even though I was burnt out on Assassin's Creed. I liked Watch Dogs because it was like Assassin's Creed, but modern day, which I wanted from Assassin's yeah, it Creed. Was, it, was just, it was just different. <laughs> you know, there was just enough different to, you know, set it apart. But now, you know, that led to the division. Then there's Watch Dogs 2, and now Watch Dogs Legion. And Assassin's Creed is, you know, still following that template. But, you know, in the past, and Far Cry is following that temp template, but from first person. Part of me, I have this conspiracy theory in my head going, part of the reason why we haven't seen a Splinter Cell game recently is because they're trying to figure out how to make it open world. <laughs> how to make Splinter Cell fit into the, the Ubisoft template rather than the Splinter Cell template that we've had for all this whole time. You know what happened? The day of the Capitol riots, Will, I mm. was looking up uh, videos of uh, Splinter Cell Conviction the siege on the white house remember that in that game oh yeah 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 yeah. trying to find a meme and it wasn't funny so i didn't post it yeah <laughs> it was not it was very sad um but that game is amazing and that's a game that i need yeah. to replay that was uh when we liked ubisoft but uh, uh that's yeah. another thing people didn't like conviction because it was too different than the other ubisoft i'm uh, the other uh splinter cell games right we were big fans of splinter cell but uh, honestly i i i liked how different the the conviction was i, th yeah, I think that yeah i, I think that and it honestly, needed to go that way kind of yeah and honestly like if you prefer you know the the more like stealthy open-ended pointer cells blacklist the game immediately following that reverted back to that but still kept the more fast-paced style of conviction it was like the a great melding of both worlds the problem is that michael ironside didn't play sam so it was crap yeah it was garbage <laughs> Yeah. we we loved stealth games but we didn't have a playstation so we played splinter cell instead uh right instead of metal gear uh then right. we played metal gear and we were like oh, this does stealth a lot better and that's yeah. why we liked conviction because 
that was Splinter Cell also, being like, oh, okay, well, Metal Gear does does uh, stealth better than us, so let's just try to change things entirely. Also, too, uh, the Splinter Cell games were originally optimized for the original Xbox, and we did not have that growing up. We had either PlayStation or GameCube, and we, we were like shit out of luck. I played them on PC. We played cool. three on PC. We had the first one on GameCube. Yes, yes, you're right. Um, and now I have them all on Xbox, so I'll just play them on that. It 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 was very slow and a little complicated. It, compared, it was all, yeah, to, it was it was trying to be more because it was Tom Clancy. Yeah, and that was back when he was still alive. So it was trying to be more realistic and like grounded than Metal Gear ever tried to be. Um. So anyway, I'm hoping that uh, more companies will get the star wars license i'm hoping that they're not yeah, limiting um, it to just ubisoft or anything i hope we get some well, indie I, games out of this i saw someone in the chat ask if this meant that ubisoft now has the exclusive license uh no once ea's exclusive license uh is over um star wars is going to be available to any developer who wants to make a star wars game or any developer that disney wants making a star wars game I assuming say. they don't make an exclusive deal with anybody which i don't think they right would. yeah I, they, I think they, they, they should know the value of having control over this yeah you know and, and they, they should know the value of just letting a bunch of people make it yeah um devolver digital tweeted out we want to do a star war and I like let it. them do it because War. I yeah. think that'd be amazing if they got to do a Star yeah. War. Because I mean, like, it's just an example of John Wick, the v official video game of that of that series. John Wick Hex was made by the creator of Thomas Was Alone. Oh. That's a weird ass indie game where you play as squares, and he he made a weird ass indie jo uh, John ha John Wick game where like you fight on a grid. Mm -hmm. and it, it's like gotten a lot of good buzz a lot of good reviews from it so i wouldn't mind seeing things like that with star wars yeah let 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 the art take form you know and not every yes. game has to be a big budget triple a game like squadrons was a good idea it was only 40 bucks it was yeah. like a small little game but it was EAified to all hell. So, so yeah. like, not exactly, it's like a good step in the right direction, but not exactly yeah. what us Star Wars fans are, are looking for. Yeah. Anyway, what do you have to say about Indiana Jones? I can't wait. I am <laughs> so, you know what I did when I heard the news? I started playing Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb for the original Xbox on my Xbox One. Why? Because I wanted, I needed a fix, and rather than watch the trilogy for like the thousandth time, I went and I played that because I've actually never played it. And I know a lot of people say like that's the best of the 3D Indiana Jones games. Uh -oh. um, and I don't, I don't think they're wrong necessarily, but it is definitely a product of its time. Let me tell you. <laughs> um, but it has a lot of really good ideas in it that I think could translate over to a modern Indiana Jones game. So the last Indiana Jones game was Indiana Jones Adventure World for Facebook. That doesn't count. Right. Uh, before uh, that before was that... Lego Indiana Jones. Before that right. was Indiana Jones and the Lost Puzzles for BlackBerry and mobile phones. And before right. that, which is the real last Indiana Jones game, was Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings for the Wii, DS, PSP, and PlayStation 2. So I have that on PS2. Have this not was played it yet. 2009, so 11, 12 years yeah. ago? 12 years ago. It's, it's embarrassing. So here's the thing about the Staff of Kings. Apparently, it's not a good game. Uh, but it's depending on which version you get, on the Wii, uh, you have to play with Waggle and the Wii remote support. That's it. You, you can't use a regular ass controller. Um, you can use a regular ass controller on the PS2 but it's slower and on the Wii there's also co-op where you can play with Indiana Jones and his and his dad doing the adventures and on the Wii it has Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis the classic PC point and click game from the early 90s which is everybody's favorite Indiana Jones game oh, except everybody. mine cuz I don't I don't play PC point and click games I'm not a nerd um <laughs> 
<laughs> but it's definitely a game I want to check out because I want to see because this was started off as like a 360 PS3 like big budget like AAA title, and then it got downgraded to a, a Wii uh, PS2 game, mm-hmm. and I want to just I want to see why. <laughs> I wonder if, because like usually around this era when they made Wii versions of a game, it was the worst version. Right. So, so I wonder if there was a better version out there. That there, just... they 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 showcased really like high quality HD Indiana Jones like fighting in the streets of running from cars and things like that, um, and it looked really good for the time. And then, like, years later, we got the Staff of Kings. Indiana Jones, Staff of King, all gameplay footage. Uh, canceled game. Yeah. Here it is. This is uh, from yeah, that, Neo Gamer. It. Wow. Yeah. This is not the game we got. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. It's Harrison. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Something just happened with his face there. Hold on. Up there. <laughs> Look at this frame. Hold on. There's one <laughs> frame where it just dips out and doesn't, it doesn't, does not work. Oh my God. Oh, the, uh, I'm glad we get to, we get to uh, analyze these trailers on the internet now. Yeah. Uh, when was this shown? Where was this shown? Was this shown anywhere? This is like, yeah, this was at E3. Like, early like early in the 360s life so it must have been like 2007 here's footage of the level we just i just showed this on screen from the ps2 version and it did not look like this at all this looks like freaking uncharted yeah well uh too bad may uh you know it'd be great if we can get a rama this that would be sick yeah um but yeah i I am very excited for this i've always said indiana jones and james bond for that matter should have a bigger presence in video games than they currently do because they are the perfect fodder for video games especially indiana jones uh and the and it's just it's nice that a company like bethesda of all place of all places and machine games who have experience making games where you punch nazis in the face um (laughs) coming back to like and make it, you know, the the big gaming franchise it really deserves to be, and I think there's enough uniqueness about Indiana Jones to separate it from Tomb Raider and Uncharted and games that have ripped it off significantly <laughs> since. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm interested to see a trailer and what type of game they're gonna turn it into. Yeah. Uh, all right. We got a release date for. Oh wait, how about we talk about this first? We got Key Cobra with 200 bits. LucasArts okay. point and click games were great. They were like Sierra Quest games, but without the BS of, oh crap, I didn't pick up the pine cone in part one and now I can't finish the game. So, my understanding, I mean, like, we did not play PC point and click adventure games when we were no. younger. It's no, just, we did not. It's not something we did. But it's my understanding that the LucasArts PC point and click games like Fate of Atlantis, Sam and Max, uh, Monkey Island, and all that were some of the best PC games available at the time. They had very good writing. They had very clever puzzles. Um, they had very inter- interesting graphics. Um, and they, they were just really unique and interesting and fun to play. And it's my understanding that the Sierra Adventure games, for every one good one, there were a thousand shit ones. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> you know, one I had, I had a ROM of Fate of Atlantis like years ago. That's a game I'd be interested interested to play because of all the Indiana Jones games, that one gets brought up a lot outside of the movies. When it comes to like the Indiana Jones canon, there's the the movies, the three movies, and only the three movies. Um, then there's the TV show that ran for a really long time, and then there's like Fate of Atlantis. Like that's up there in terms of like Indiana Jones recognition. So I'm really interested to play that and see like what 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 it's about. Didn't Sierra make like uh Rainbow Six or something? 
No. Sierra published Half Life. Oh. Yeah. What did they? What did I, I used to play Sierra games? Half Life, maybe. Half Life maybe, for yeah. Windows and PlayStation Two for some reason. <laughs> what other shoot Unreal Tournament? No. What else could they have made that I played? I Sierra Sierra made a lot of stuff. Uh, SWAT. Yeah, Kings. They made SWAT. That that might have been it. <laughs> I did play SWAT. Thank you, Beetle, Beetle, Beetle wins. Metal Jesus used to work at Sierra. Oh, interesting. That's true, yeah. I did not know that. Crash Bandicoot, Wrath of Cortex. They made oh, a lot of games. Uh, Spyro. Yeah, yeah, because then Sierra was bought by uh, Vivendi Universal, and then Vivendi Universal merged with Activision, and now Sierra is owned by Activision. <laughs> they used to, they also for a time were called Sierra Online. I remember Sierra Online yeah. making a game that I played. NASCAR Racing, though no, that's not it. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, um. Anyway, Pokemon Snap. It's got a release yeah, date. Yeah, we have wow, a release look date. That. Whoa, cool. I this is one of the, this is a game well that everybody has been wanting a re-release or a sequel for or something. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And it's the game I always said you can't do it. It's not a, it's not going to work today. That game is just a freaking uh it's it's just it it's just a point and click adventure basically. <laughs> yeah and here we are we have a new trailer and uh release date nintendo that nintendo found a way nintendo found a way let me see if i can read this well that's playing uh the pokemon company yeah. has confirmed the release date for the upcoming new pokemon snap budging photo budding photographers don't have too long to wait as it'll be available on the 30th of april a brand new trailer has arrived to give us a good news showing off some glorious new never before seen footage of the game this time around the adventure takes place in a region called lentil <laughs> and it all looks very lovely indeed i will say this trailer looks way better than the last trailer we had but still yeah. it's, it looks like it looks like something's not right it doesn't look like a deep game it doesn't look like a very expensive game <laughs> no not at all i mean i don't think the first one was it yeah i don't think it's right to expect it to be like a deep game yeah. it's just that like this looks like a ten dollar like phone game not not, <laughs> not a ten dollar phone game it looks like a like a it looks like a cheap like you know like yeah. little quick experience not not a major not a know, full sixty dollar budget yeah triple a game not not a game yeah. for the biggest franchise in the world, you know? Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. It's mostly weird because now Pokemon is on a home console. And like when yeah. you when a game's on a home console, you expect it to like look real nice right. and polished if it comes from a big budget game company like this. But this mm -hmm. does it it doesn't look like that, man. It looks weird. But so did Pokemon Sword and Shield. That game didn't look that great either. Yeah. And I defended that. <laughs> I don't know why, for whatever reason, this I'm like. Well, I, I I think you know Pokemon Sword and Shield that you know is an RPG. It has full you know RPG elements. It's got you know a, a deeper level of gameplay. Whereas Pokemon Snap, it's it's literally just taking pictures of animals, dude. <laughs> That's it. You're literally Something clicking else, on the there's... animals. Exactly. Uh. Get ready for a new Pokemon Snap. All new adventure of Nintendo Switch inspired by the classic N64 game, Pokemon Snap. Uh, explore beaches, jungles, deserts, and more as you photograph over 200 Pokemon. That's 50 more than the last time. No, there were less in the original <laughs> no, Pokemon there were, Snap. I think, there were, I think there were only like 50 in Pokemon Snap. There were God. not a lot. And investigate the mysterious Illumina phenomenon in new Pokemon Snap. Yeah, this is the... They're really focusing on whatever the name of this Pokemon is. 
Yeah, the dinosaur looking leaf type, grass type mm-hmm. guy. I know so much about Pokemon, guys. Uh, that's not like a cool like legendary. Give me like a give me like a like a Mew or like a legendary bird or something. You know what I mean? Something exotic. Not this guy. Wild Pokemon are all around and have adapted to thrive in all the various natural expanses of the Lentil region. <laughs> I'm never going to read that and not think it's funny. They may be seen living in groups patrolling their territory, wandering uh, s- serenely on their own or even playing with other Pokemon species. With a careful eye and a photographer's keen sense of adventure, you'll be able to spot Pokemon lurking in all sorts of places, including secluded hideaways and sometimes swooping down suddenly from the sky. Players will be able to interact with Pokemon by throwing a fluff fruit, a tasty fruit found across the region to catch their attention or watch them eat. You can even use that fruit to help draw out Pokemon into a variety of situations to see how they react. These serendipitous opportunities present a special challenge and catching them with your camera at the perfect moment may gain you higher scores. May gain you higher scores. Not always, though. If you want to see more, there's a bunch of screenshots. Um, Didn't you give them an apple in the original one or was it like a Pokemon themed apple? Uh, that, there was an apple. Um, there was also something called a pester ball. Yes, that which would like remember. just you just throw at them to like uh, pester them. <laughs> you literally just annoy them. Yeah. Uh, the original game had sixty three of the original one fifty one. Damn. And and yeah. I think we saw before the original Pokemon Stab takes three hours. Yeah, that sounds about right. Also, according to Wikipedia, it originally started out as a non-Pokemon-themed game called Jack and the Beanstalk. What? Yeah. So Pokemon Snap takes four hours to beat. And if you want to be a completionist, if you're really if you're really feeling the Pokemon Snap, six yeah. hours. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, so don't expect this to be a long game. I don't. I, I'm still... I still don't think this is going to be good. I think people's mind, people have in their mind that Pokemon Snap was better than it was. I fit, I like, I feel like the developers of new Pokemon Snap are, should be smart enough to know that they need to do more than what they did back on the Nintendo 64. Um, they, they, they should be able to add more features and gameplay elements and all this other stuff that would bring it closer to a modern game. Uh, what that is, I don't know. I'm not a game developer. Um, but hopefully they'll be able to implement that into this experience. I mean, with the mainline Pokemon games, I'm able to set aside like weird things. Like the trees looking weird. <laughs> that everybody was uh-huh. making fun of with Sword and Shield. I'm willing to put stuff like that aside because I just want to look at the cute Pokemon and, and capture the cute Pokemon and stuff. So, yeah. like, that's why I liked the original Pokemon Snap back then. I liked mm-hmm. discovering all these cute Pokemon, taking pictures of them, doing cute stuff. Um, I don't really need that in my life right now. You know? I'm older. Yeah. I don't know. You know. Pokemon Go... That was another. That's what I thought Pokemon Snap like evolved into. You're just you're finding these yeah. Pokemon in the real world, um, and that game when that came out was glitchy as all hell. It was broken as all hell, but I was willing to put it aside because the game was good and I liked looking at the cute Pokemon and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, this I don't know, man. I just it's not it's not grabbing me. I feel like I feel like it's just a nostalgia thing, and that's that's it. I don't see how I mean, this is appealing outside of that. I mean, that's like ninety percent of it, definitely. But again, if they they should be smart enough to know that they can't just basically remake Pokemon Snap and put it out in twenty twenty one, they have to you know accommodate for the twenty years of you know game development enhancements since the original. 
Edward Bova says, this is the first Pokemon Snap not made by a Nintendo second party or first party. It's being made by a Bandai Namco. Oh, oh, well, they do a lot of work with Nintendo. Yeah. Also, um, it's also the second Pokemon Snap, so... <laughs> <laughs> um, this is 30 maybe 40 what oh the the price and this is gonna be a 60 dollar game dude there's no way it's not a 60 dollar game <laughs> i is hope it, not is it on the eShop yet yeah uh it's up for pre-order for how much i don't know i'm on the pokemon snap website Pre-order. Boop. Continue. Give it to me, baby. $60, guys. <laughs> Damn. $60. Oh, my God. Come on, guys. Edible Jim Sock. This is probably going to be praised more so for the graphics than the gameplay. Is I it hope gonna you be saved up your... Uh your gold points because there's no way that's worth 50 60 dollars is it going to be praised for the graphics i mean these screenshots look good yeah but like it's i mean you know <laughs> it's like the screenshots look good but that's not how the game looks this is how the game looks the animations are still like yeah you know like like i'm not wowed by this you know it's like it, it's like it's painting an idea of a picture. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. I I don't like sitting here and shitting on things that people are excited about. But I just I'm yeah. just not I'm not sold on it. Anyway, compared to Sword and Shield, it looks amazing. It does. I'm not gonna <laughs> argue about that. I just like sword and shield uh, uh mechanically and this doesn't actually i didn't like sword and shield that much but uh i was into the game and this one i i don't see myself being you know excited about uh, yeah taking pictures of of new pokemon oh i gotta play that whole level again for this one part where i got where i get to throw a pester ball out of pokemon and hope that he does yeah. what i need him to do oh, oh man i, I took a I took a really nice picture of Grookey, but I need to take a better one because his arm is like slightly obscuring his face. Hope I get him in the right moment. Yeah, then you play the level like four more times just to get that yeah. one part. Uh, Nintendo is making copyright claims on videos of Game & Watch hacking. I'm not surprised about this at all. Yeah. Uh, you read it. Open. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to open it. They got too many tabs open. Um, right. despite oh. its despite its retro charms, the fifty dollar Nintendo Game and Watch Super Mario Brothers handheld felt like it could benefit from a few more games and upgrade some talented hackers made possible before the device was even released. But Nintendo doesn't like consumers messing with its hardware, and today it appears it started using copyright claims to take down Game and Watch YouTube hacking videos. Twitter user Stack Smashing uh, was one of the first to start experimenting with Nintendo's Game & Watch hardware, cracking open the device to see how customizable its hardware and software was. Not surprising given how simple the device is. There's no expandable memory. The USB-C port is for power only, and it, it cannot be connected to the internet. It didn't take long for Stack Smashing to find a way to swap it to swap the included Super Mario Bros. ROM file with other games, including The Legend of Zelda and the original Game Boy Pokemon. Work on hacking and customizing the new Nintendo Game & Watch was progr has progressed quite, quite a bit since mid-November, but this morning, Stack Smashing woke up to a notice on YouTube that Nintendo had made copyright claims on two of his Game & Watch hacking videos, and as a result, they were no longer viewable on YouTube. And there's the tweet um, from Stack Smashing. Copyright owner using content ID has claimed some material in your video. We've seen, we've all seen this before. Yes. <laughs> uh, according to Stack Smashing, uh, who spoke to Gizmodo this morning, uh, one of the videos feature only in-game footage of of the version of Super Mario Brothers included with the new Nintendo Game and Watch. 
footage that countless YouTube reviewers have also included in their reviews and hands-on of the device, as well as a video featuring the handheld modified to play the NES version of The Legend of Zelda. <gasps> Prior to these claims, Nintendo hadn't reached out to Stack Smashing in any way about their YouTube videos or the Game & Watch hacking content sh they shared via their Twitter account. In response to the claim, Stack Smashing has edited both the videos in question and is filing disputes in an attempt to have them allowed back on YouTube again. Gizmodo has reached out to Nintendo for comment on why copyright claims were made for these two specific videos when the gameplay footage they both included has also been featured on countless other gaming-focused channels on their site. One of the videos taken down does include instructions on how users can back up the Game & Watch's included firmware allowing them to revert back to it at any time, including guides uh, to using a couple of scripts, but no ROM files are shared. The copyright claims made by Nintendo specifically refer to the use of the game footage featured in both videos. Nintendo has a long taken a strong stance against hacking its hardware and consoles to circumvent security features and facilitate game piracy or access games that have been region locked, but it's not like the new Game & Watch has the processing power to allow gamers to enjoy the latest and greatest Switch titles. And in these videos, Stack Smashing is in no way advocating that anyone interested in hacking the Game & Watch and expanding its capabilities should download ROM files for titles they don't already own. Hacking the new Game & Watch doesn't, uh, also doesn't in any way hinder sales of the hardware. If anything, more people will be encouraged to buy it knowing it could potentially play more than a disappointing roster of just three included games. Uh, on screen right now, I have our Game & Watch video. Um, why, can't I, why can't I search for it in my creator studio? What's that about? Uh, did we get blocked? <laughs> I mean, it's on, it's on screen right now. You can watch it on screen. All right. There it is. I was just making sure that it's still monetized because we use Game and I mean, we use Stack Smashing's video, his his initial video of him hacking the Game and Watch. It is not yeah. an easy hack. No. It's not something you could just do. You need one of these things. I forgot what it's called. Um. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work. It was, it's not. It's not like hacking uh an xbox or hacking uh uh even a switch hacking a switch is easy yeah. uh you still need to get like an rcm jig but that's you just slot off the side this thing look at what he's freaking doing he's he's like hook he's hooking this thing into the like uh the the dev port like it's 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 all it's it's involved um yeah. and even even then it's not even like that great of an experience like playing the hacked games on here so I really don't understand uh, why Nintendo thinks that this is uh, something worth uh, striking down, especially when they're not even doing this stuff for friggin' Android Switch hacks and and, and, yeah. and that stuff. This is bizarre. This 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 it's seems like a really weird thing. It's always really weird how selective companies, especially Nintendo, are on what they strike down and what they you know let slide. This seems so harmless in the grand scheme of things. Um, because, like you said, it's very difficult to do. And also, he's not advocating for doing anything illegal. You know, just he's just showing you a cool thing he can do with something he bought. But Nintendo apparently took great offense to it and decided to take it down. So, so, so uh, the just the vagabond in the chat says why can't you hack something you own what's wrong with that so that's the thing is that like it's perfectly within his right to make a video about hacking a device that he owns he's perfectly mm -hmm. within his right the problem and the thing that nintendo is legally acting on is that it shows footage of their game so that that is what they're using as ammo to strike it down but that's like sending Al Capone to jail for tax evasion rather exactly. than all of the murders he did. Exactly. You know, that that's what's going on here. Yes. Uh, it says copyrighted content in Game & Watch Super Mario Brothers. That's weird because th th that's yeah. saying 
I would have understood if they, I mean, I still don't understand. It's still stupid no matter what, but they could have said copyrighted content, The Legend of Zelda or copyrighted content, yeah. Super Mario Brothers. Instead, Mario they Brothers. said copyrighted content, the device he's holding is what we own and they're using our IP. Yeah. <laughs> That's weird. Uh, but this this goes back to what we've talked about before about how um, game companies own the rights to their game in full. So when mm. a streamer like me plays one of their games, they could just tell me I can't do that. They have right. every legal authority to be like, hey, this one person in particular can't play our game. Give us all of the money that you just made. It, it's basically an unspoken like gentleman's agreement between game developers and streamers um, that they they basically allow you, allow streamers to play their games, um, but you know as, so as long as they don't do anything like noticeably illegal with it, right? Basically, yeah. So uh, I'm just basically I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying that's how it is right now is that it, uh, we don't own the copyright for the stuff we do. Uh, these game mm-hmm. companies own it and uh, they just let us do it because it gets more money in their pocket. People get to see their game. Yeah. Like when it's I mutually beneficial. Yeah. When I make a video on the game, watch people look at it and go, Oh, I didn't know about yeah. that. Let me get it. Even if I trash it, even if I say it's terrible, people will still buy it. So um, yeah, I mean, uh it's most game companies know it's beneficial for them uh sega Mm -hmm. microsoft those type those types of companies know that uh yeah hacking something isn't bad for their bottom line you know it's it more people would buy this if i was able to tell them it was easy to hack yeah uh but nintendo doesn't even want more people to buy it (laughs) (laughs) true it's a limited edition thing they don't care um so that's just nintendo being stupid and dumb again here we go again yeah um here we go with some more nintendo news super nintendo world opening delayed yet again so sad uh universal studios japan super nintendo world theme park was set to open on february 4th but on Thursday, the company announced plans to postpone the opening due to a COVID-19 spike and emergency declaration in the Osaka prefecture. The park will now open sometime after February 4th uh, when the state of emergency is no longer in effect due to the nature of the pandemic. It's entirely unclear when that will be. This postponement comes less than a month after Nintendo devoted an entire direct to the new theme park. Nintendo and Universal Studios Japan have spent the last year teasing fans about the park, revealing its fantastic looking food, as well as its Mario Kart themed ride, Koopa's Challenge. Universal Studios will eventually open a version of Super Mario World in both uh, Universal Studios Hollywood and Orlando. The company hasn't given a timeline for these expansions and likely won't until Universal Studios Japan's version officially opens. It's been a hard year for theme parks as COVID-19 has proven it's too dangerous to to reasonably visit but someday hopefully sooner rather than later the worlds will open back up again and we can finally get our hands on that mario pancake sandwich it looks good yeah so uh i talked about this on stream yesterday um Mm -hmm. every night i see the japan times shit every night i see the japan Times tweet out um the daily covid cases for tokyo specifically uh-huh. And they're hitting record numbers over there for 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 Japan. It's pretty bad. It's it's it's. I, mean, yeah. I thought they were doing good, but apparently they're not. Um, so it got me curious to to. So I look look at this. Here here's they're spiking. They're spiking pretty bad. This is all of Japan, not just Tokyo. Um, right. And this got me interested. Like, so yesterday or two days ago, it said they had uh. 1,400 new cases in Tokyo, which is a lot because they went down to almost zero at one point. Um, and then I was like, well, how's New York doing? And New York had 13,000 that same yep. day. <laughs> here, So this is Japan on screen. This is the United States, baby. Not to be outdone. Here we go. USA, Put a couple more digits USA, on there, dude. USA. You got nothing on us. Uh 
what we're doing golf scores nah <laughs> nah and tokyo is actually bigger than new york by the way so that yeah i mean i think there's a million more people in tokyo than there is in new york or close to it I, I, at right the, at the very least it's similar sizes and and we have 10 times more covid cases than they have it's not good it's not good but i forgot what they are closing down again the, in, in korea the the ratio the death ratio was like one in four when the it was like four and one whereas in the united states it was 25 and one it's because i mean there's a lot of reasons i'm not gonna get into it there, yeah. the video game podcast but uh you know it'd be nice if we can go to the doctor yeah <laughs> that'd be nice if when you get covid you could just go to the doctor that'd be cool yeah lots of people here can't do that um but i want i mean i wanted to go to japan last year and i couldn't for obvious reasons i want to go to japan this yeah. year i want to go in august and i don't think it's gonna happen i think i'm gonna have to wait a whole nother year to go to japan yeah and i'm very sad about that i mean i want to i want to go for this nintendo world but I've, i wanted to go for other reasons too and uh it's not gonna happen and it makes me very sad there's a lot more people in japan than in new york i meant tokyo i said tokyo didn't i yeah um anyway All right. so let me let me re-clarify tokyo specifically no, New York specifically has 10 times more cases on that specific day than Tokyo specifically had. The cities, I'm comparing, I was comparing the cities. Right. Um, anyway, let's do some quickie news. All right. I meant you were looking at Japan stats on, yeah, I was looking at Japan stats compared to America in total, not specifically New York. Those are the stats I had on screen was Japan, all of Japan versus all of America. And America has more people, but not by that much. Not by the hun the hundreds of thousands of cases that yeah. we have on a daily basis. Anyway... But you might be able to prevent COVID with your brand new Razer Project Hazel, which is a N95 mask with RGB and voice projection. Voice projection? I didn't know that. Yeah. So this, uh, a lot of people were trying to show me this. Yeah. I hate everything about this. Uh, so to clarify, this is a concept that Razer unveiled at CES last week. It is it is an N95 mask um with uh rgb lighting in the in the vents um and a clear faceplate so people could see you talk um and also uh voice projection so that they can hear you better um and it is using thx technology because apparently razor owns thx what yeah who let that happen uh, i forgot so THX was originally made by Lucasfilm and then they sold THX to, I think, uh, creative, uh, oh. you know, the sound company and then razor bought creative. Oh my God. I didn't know that creative yeah. really messed up. Creative yeah. was, was like a big deal for a while. Like, like, like you didn't have a good computer unless you had a creative sound card in there. Yeah. And then, for whatever reason, people realize, oh, wait, it's not that important to have a great sound card in your computer. <laughs> um, this is ridiculous. Yeah. I didn't know it had sound projection. Imagine going to the grocery yeah. store with this freaking thing on. I mean... There it is. I was looking for the pictures of it on a person. The RGB yeah. is too much, dude. Well, how else are you going to know it's a gamer-focused mask? I was actually fine with with how it looks with the lights off, but once you turn the lights on, I don't know about it. And it's plastic. I don't. I don't. I don't know. How also, much? it comes. It comes. It, well, that's the thing. It's a prototype. It's just a concept. So mm -hmm. they're not. There is no like official price. There's no release date. It's just. It's just something cool that uh, Razer was making so and that cool. they wanted to show at CES. I should also note that it comes with a 
the the case the charging case has uv lights in it to help sterilize it when it when it's done and it it uh razor envisions users being able to control the lighting and voice projection with a mobile app i like the idea i have to say it's yeah. actually a pretty cool idea now that now that it's all read out to me and i could i'm thinking about it i just I, I don't like the gamer focused aesthetic well, here. You know, think, think about it like this. You know, masks are now just a part of our lives or a part of our culture. I'm actually and, excited about that. And, and well, more than that, they're now a part of fashion. So you're not just going to have, you know, your standard N95 masks or, you know, the, the, the regular surgical masks. You're going to have fashionable masks. So, you know, don't be surprised if you see, you know, high end fashion companies making really fancy masks. And don't be surprised if you see gamer focused companies making gamer focused masks. This, this is the new normal. This is the world we live in now. What are you getting at, Will? So, Wolfed apparel masks? Yes, Wolfed and apparel masks. <laughs> it. I'm actually excited to like go to a convention and have and see a lot of people wearing like, uh, masks or, or or like even like you know basically it's gonna be like what happened in uh in like asian countries um yeah i was trying to look up like read up on that because like i was thinking to myself like why are masks so common over there and they're not common over here it, yeah apparently there was like a there was like a like a there was like a pneumonia pandemic in like the the tens in like the 1910s that uh yeah. started the whole mask situation um but then we had what was it the the, the spanish, spanish flu, flu in yeah. like the teens and yeah we had the same anti-maskers that we do now <laughs> yep. so i don't know why back then that started a whole movement where they just wear masks and they're courteous to each other but here we're so divisive about it yeah um but again, I'm actually excited for uh, masks to be a little more normalized here and to be a part of fashion. I think that's pretty cool. I think it's cool in Asian countries when they do it. Um, and I think it's cool here. I just, it's it, it had to be Razor. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I should also note that Razor also designed the mask so that um, the way it, like, it cups your nose, it's not going to, you don't like breathe fog up into your glasses because as somebody who wears masks and glasses happens all the damn time, man. It's not fun. <laughs> yeah, I've never, never experienced that. All right. Uh, oh, yeah, this is supposed to be quickie news. It's supposed to be rapid fire. Um, random, oh, well. Nintendo wannabe, uh, Nintendo Switch wannabe run Cyberpunk. Somebody sent this to me. Did I talk about this last week? I think somebody sent it in last week and we talked about it very mm. briefly. Uh, the Aya Neo seven-inch screen, uh, twelve eighty by eight hundred. This is a looks like that Alienware thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. It is seven hundred dollars. That was something we couldn't find the price last week. Yeah. So here we go. We have a price. It's based. It's a Windows computer. Uh, it's seven hundred dollars for the Indiegogo early bird option. Oh. Do I have to get that? You don't have to do anything. I mean, like, because I should make a video on this, right? But then, I mean, it's a Kickstarter. Forget it. We're not doing that because I'm going to give them $700 yeah. and then they're not going to make it. That It's Indiegogo, which yeah. means that even if it fails, they get the money anyway. Yeah. Uh, next news. Nintendo Live says Nintendo tasks Super Mario Bros. 35 players with defeating 3.5 million Bowsers. I'm going to play this. Uh, update. This special Super Mario 35 event is now live. If you want to take part in this in and claim some platinum points for your My Nintendo account, make sure to catch up. I think this is also part of the uh, pin-like missions. Are you doing that again? I... You know, I played this for a little bit, and I just could not get into it. No, I mean the pin missions to get the new pin set. Oh, that. Um, well, I wasn't going to buy uh, uh, 3D World. And I think that's, like, how you get most of the, the points. I mean, because yeah. if I don't have to buy it, then I'll do it. <laughs> 
the missions are 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 weird. Yeah. Uh, I participated in the Splatfest, which was part of it. Uh, yeah. Supposedly, they're going to keep adding missions. Okay, so maybe I'll just keep an eye on it and try to do what I can. So Super Mario Thirty, th 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 this this thing isn't on here. Okay, you just have to play Super Mario Thirty Five in any capacity. Yeah. All right, well that's good to know. So you don't actually have to participate, but I would like to. Uh, I three point five million Bowser sounds like a lot, but you beat a lot of Bowser's in one game of Mario Thirty Five, so yeah, it's really not. It's really not that big of a deal. Uh, I don't know how long you have to do it. Uh, does it say? I guess until the freaking game go, like ends. <laughs> uh, the first event test players. It will kick off on the 18th of January at 11 p.m. Pacific and run until January 25th uh, at the same time. Oh, so you have until <coughs> next Monday. So it's a week to defeat 3.5 yes. million of Bozors. Uh, next up, we got Power A is releasing two new Animal Crossing controllers, and they look cute as shit. Oh, And they're 25 bucks each. So, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. And they have headphone jacks. Yeah. Include a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Mappable nice. buttons on the rear. I don't know if it has turbo. There you go. I don't think it has turbo. Probably not. It was 25 bucks. It's also wired. So yeah. That's cool. You got a macro. Well, not really a macro button. Just an extra button. Mm -hmm. So you know what you can do? You can map it to one of the face buttons and just go like this. Like it's paintball. And you make your own turbo. Yeah. Uh, but those power rate controllers are, are really good. So 25 bucks, yeah. not bad. Uh, we got Apex Legends coming to Switch, maybe, potentially having a date, maybe. Um, it got delayed. It was supposed to come out last uh, late last yeah. year. But now there was a leaked Japanese video that said that uh, it was going to come out with the launch of Season 8, which is February 2nd, which would be great. Uh, the text is not there on the English version of the YouTube. It's it, it says, quote, and on February 2nd, it will be possible to play on Switch at the same time as the start of Season 8. Uh, which would be amazing. Mm -hmm. I'm excited for Apex Legends on the Switch. I will play it exactly one yeah. time on the Switch. <laughs> uh, but maybe I'll play it more. Maybe that'll get me to play it more on my Xbox. Especially if it's cross... Uh, I'm pretty sure it has cross... Uh, it's going to have cross save when this is all or cross progression when this is all said and done. It's, yeah, I think I think it they said that it will. Um and then the last thing I have here. Special edition gold Monster Hunter Rise amiibo set up for grabs in 7-Eleven in Japan lottery. Jeez. A truly limited run. Look at how beautiful these amiibos are. Those are those are very nice. We've seen limited edition Amiibo in the past, but these Monster Hunter Rise ones just might be the rarest ones yet. 7-Eleven convenience stores in Japan have unveiled this limited and special edition gold Amiibo set to come to celebrate the launch of Capcom's upcoming Nintendo Switch release. The catch, because there's always one, is that you can't buy the set. You see it's actually part of a prize pool. These are going to be the most expensive Amiibos ever released. Oh, absolutely. Anyone in Japan who purchased a download card for the game between the 25th of January and the 11th of April earns automatic entry into a special lottery, and one of the prizes happens to be the Amiibo set. According to the official Capcom PR, the designs above are just concepts with the re real version of these gold Amiibo to be revealed in the near future. There's no word on how many sets will be available either. We imagine these will be quite valuable in years to come if you're really desperate though you can always spray paint your standard set i, I was gonna say gonna i was gonna ask is there gonna be a standard set then you just find whatever color gold that is and just spray paint it here you go you can get them on play asia for 33 dollars each jesus, jesus christ. christ oh wait what's the difference well, There's, think about how much money you're saving. Um, well, no, no, no. You can get it from GameStop for 25 bucks. 20 bucks. Yeah. So it's a little cheaper. I might have to get these. Even though I'm not like that big of a Monster Hunter guy. 
Yeah. I'm an amiibo guy. And the Monster Hunter ones are actually, they, they're they usually pretty rare here in the States because who, you know, it's not a normal thing. I keep thing. debating back and forth whether I want to get the Ryu and Ken amiibo. Like, I I said I was done. Don't, but I feel like I need to in. have Ryu and Ken. Don't do it. <laughs> well, I, I, I say I'm done all, all the time with figure collecting and I'm fucking here I am buying a Firefly G.I. Joe figure. That there was nothing in there. It looked like. Well, because I put them downstairs in the. Oh. Mics, like, <laughs> I was like, well, I had an a invisible thing. No, he's there. He's Cobra's demolition expert. Oh, of course. The, the problem it, it was it's the Target exclusive Cobra Island line, and those are really hard ah. to get because Target Target it does does not give a shit about collectors. They 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 the pre orders just end immediately and. It just goes to the bots and the scalpers. So I saw that in the store and I bought it. So I, just just to be safe. And he's not on my hierarchy list of Joes that I actually want. Yeah, I basically got it because I was afraid I'd never get the chance again. <laughs> That's the end of the news, Will. That's all we got. All right. So you you know you, you know what's going on, Will. Oh boy. Quit of the week. Do I ever? Quit of the week. Quit of the week. Good times. It's, it's Good times all around. We got uh, this is from in in cred in credi fucked. <laughs> Hayao Miyazaki is a whole mood. Oh, and it's just seen this. This kind of went way the rounds a few days ago. Yeah, and it's just screenshots of him from I think the uh, the, the Ghibli documentary. And it's him saying most yeah. of our world is rubbish. I I do agree. Uh, the future is clear. It's going to fall apart. <laughs> He's smoking a cigarette here and says, kids get it. They don't operate on logic. <laughs> and finally, you say you think... This is an interviewer saying this to him. You, you yeah. say you think all anime is trash. Is there one that you dislike in particular? And he says, your favorite one. <laughs> He's such a... Asshole. He's such a grumpy man. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, he he's he's considered to be the Disney of anime. He's made all these beloved, timeless classics that everybody enjoys. So these heart heartfelt, heartwarming tales of you know for all ages. And he's just a bitter old man. He's the there's the bitterest old man I've ever seen, and I love him for it. I've never seen a Miyazaki film, but I love I him so much. I have never either, and I've never seen that because documentary. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's such a bastard. I'm a bad weeb. Uh, yeah. Guys, they're all on we... H- They're all on what now? <laughs> they're all on HBO Max, so we just use your just use mom and dad's HBO account. To Guys, we're talking it. to you people now. Here we go. Yes! Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you had let the comments over on our YouTube channel of last week's Wolf Den podcast, this is the part of the show where we will answer you. And of course, everybody watching at home, please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. I'll uh, remind you that last week we had Dan on the show. Dan Seibert. Yes. That's Seibert channel. That's Seibert guy, wherever you're looking at him. Uh, it was a good time. You should listen to it if you haven't already. Uh, Seven says, Bob, sometimes saying Will and sometimes saying my brother like there's a secret third brother no one knows about. You know what my problem is? <laughs> Will is also a word. Yeah. So it makes it sound like sometimes I'm s- saying the word and not the name. So sometimes I just say my brother because it's easier. The person named Will. is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Instead, I just say my brother. <laughs> Mako Fox 22 says the kickstand is black for Mario's mustache. Uh, I disagree. That That's the, the Mario edition switch, which I can't find a pre-order on still. And I don't know yeah. if there's going to be one, which means I have to drag my ass over to the Nintendo store that day. But do uh, you really? <laughs> well, like, this, you... Is, this is my fate, Will. I, I, I know, but you can control your own destiny here's the thing will as i tell myself i have the privilege of having this job so right. me getting up and going to the nintendo store really isn't that bad of a thing compared to uh what i could be doing for my my career you know that's that yes <laughs> yes i will just say yes 
Um, anyway, uh, he's talking about how the kickstand is black, but the whole thing's red. It's like the only part of the thing that's black for whatever reason. They yeah. couldn't get the kick- and we made a whole stink about how they couldn't make the kickstand red for whatever reason. Uh, I, I mean, look, you're not wrong. They should have just made the damn thing red. There, there is no excuse for it. The excuse is they don't want to give you a red one when you inevitably bl- break the kickstand off. They want to give you yeah. a black one. Anyway, uh, Haunted Dream says, I had a hard time getting through this. Your friend's uneven mustache was triggering me the whole time. You think our ugly mugs are any better? <laughs> you should be used to that sort of situation yeah. by now. We're- weird facial hair is what this channel is all about. I regret shaving for you today. This is, believe it or not, yeah. this is shaved. This is, yeah, this so is this. You get. I, shaved, I shaved yesterday. Next week, you're not getting that. Let me write yeah. it on my agenda. I'm going to go back to pandemic beard just for you, bro. You're getting a neck beard next week. Yeah. Uh, go- Gorgat says, I replay Castlevania Symphony of the Night once a year. That's the Game Boy Advance one, right? No, that's uh, the PlayStation one. Oh. Um, the Game Boy the Game Boy Advance games were uh, Circle of the Moon, which we have um, Harmony of Harmony of Dissonance and Aria of Sorrow. Circle of the Moon is the only one that I ever played. It's the only Castlevania game I ever played. I would love to play Symphony of the Night, but they need to put that on Switch. Um, I don't think it's on Vita, and I don't. It's it's on Xbox 360, and you can play it on Xbox One, but that version is Garbo because it has that really stupid... I've probably talked about this before on the podcast. It has that really stupid border around the game where it's just Dracula and Alucard staring at each other, and it's really distracting. There, There is a Castlevania collection where they put a lot of Castlevania games on. But I think it's all like the, the NES it and is. SNES. So yeah. It goes up to four. And they have a Castlevania a, Bloodlines on it. Yeah, which is cool. There is... There's a, I gotta find it. Castle. They re-released it on PS4, but Symphony of the Night just feels like the perfect handheld game. Mm-hmm. That's the PlayStation so. one. Yeah, yeah, that game looks good. Mike Frank says subscribed to his friend's channel, but doesn't have notifications turned on. Weirdo. It's because I don't have notifications on for Dan. That's what he's saying. Shut up. I'm on YouTube every single day, all right? I don't need uh, the notification to my phone. Weirdly, <laughs> I have notifications for Fanatics 4. I have notifications for Wolf Den and Fanatics 4 for some reason. And that's the I only don't have notifications, notifications for, I have. I don't have notifications for anything. <laughs> I don't think I even have notifications for the Clips channel or the podcast channel, which I should I, fix I am a, that. I am a, I'm a very bad YouTuber. I don't have notifications for any of the channels I subscribe to. You're a terrible person. I am. It, okay. but, but here's the thing only turn notifications on if you're going to watch all of the videos from that channel yeah if you don't then you're not doing notifications right um all right that's it from last week now we're in the actual chat yes castlevania requiem that was the that's the ps4 collection with symphony of the night what do you guys want put that on switch Uh, Kyle Streams here says what accent is that when you say Mario and then he said I definitely thought Jersey uh, well you're close close Long Island Jersey with class <laughs> <laughs> Jersey with better pizza yeah but worse bagels and we can make left turns <laughs> and it smells better even though yeah. we're more surrounded by water for whatever reason, Jersey's yeah. got a lot of swamp. <laughs> uh, Edward Bova says, what do you think about Switch ranked greatest handheld of all time by UK newspaper, The Guardian, the DS or 3DS are second and third according to the Nintendo Life? I think the best handheld is the Nintendo Switch. I agree. I think it's yeah. the best console. It's, well, it's my yeah. favorite console. I don't know about the best. I would have to think a little harder about what's the best console. But uh, my favorite is in the t- Switch. Well, I'd say in depth in terms of handheld. It's the problem with 
that question is because for all intents and purposes, when you say like the best console, I mean, theoretically, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X are the best consoles because they're the most advanced. They can play a lot of games. Uh, they can do, they have all these other features and stuff. But when you think about like the best, you know, I will never say a bad word about the Nintendo 64, even though it kind of is a shitty console. <laughs> I mean, if you really think it's about it, it's, but like, it's got a lot of great games. I have a lot of fond memories with that thing. I think, I think, you know, even it's, it's weird stuff. It like was really interesting. It did a lot to advance gaming in terms of like having an analog stick by default on the controllers by having four controller ports to facilitate multiplayer. Um, but the controller was kind of bad it was really hard to develop for there were only like 300 games made for which is not a lot um but i think it's a great system i don't think this i wouldn't put 64 near the top if i had a list of i know i consoles so that n64 would not be near the top at all <laughs> you know but that's what i'm talking about you know it the n64 in retrospect is a bad system mm -hmm. but it, there a lot of good came out of it so it's true i do hear what you're saying about xbox series x being the best or playstation 5 being the best console i actually think the xbox series x might be the best console if you if, if <laughs> right now if you had to put a, a a best name on it because not only because like there's not there's barely any exclusive games for the series x there's like two right. but it could play everything prior to that and and it has a lot of features that no other consoles have. So if there was one console that is the best, I I would argue for the Xbox Series X. Because you so I was, Switch has a lot of great stuff too. Yeah. It's got some of the best games in the world, but it doesn't have all of them like the Xbox Series X does. Yeah. So I was watching a review because Hitman 3 comes out really soon. And I was watching a review of it. And apparently you can import the levels from Hitman 1 and 2 into Hitman 3 to play with like all the new hitman 3 features oh and on xbox on series x it just works you just do it on ps4 you have to make sure you have the ps4 version sorry on ps5 you have to make sure you have the ps4 version of the game installed on your system if you want to play all the levels in hitman 3 well that's just not so is it the ps5 version of hitman 3 the PS5 version of Hitman 3, okay, which comes with the PS4 version of Hitman 3, uh, you cannot import your levels from Hitman 1 and 2. You have to play them in the PS4 version of Hitman 3. Oh, that that there you go. So then that is just not yeah. that's just not good. Also, the PSVR version of Hitman 3 is only on the PS4. <laughs> Sony is doing forward compatibility wrong. So yeah, very very wrong. Yeah, it's one of the re it's that's one of the reasons why I'm hesitant to like get get a PS5. I'll like, be honest, in general, really the only thing that Sony is doing right with the PlayStation Five is the uh, is is the exclusives. Like like Sony's got yeah. good exclusives, and that's unfortunately yeah. a lot of what uh, people are looking for when they're buying a new console. But I like everything right. about my Xbox Series X. Like I just think it's a, it's a lot easier to use. I'd rather play multi platform games on that because they just yeah. freaking work. You have to worry yeah. about whether or not you have the PlayStation Five version of a game when you pop it in your yeah. PlayStation Five. And I'll say this: like Microsoft owns Bethesda, and if Indiana Jones is going to be an Xbox exclusive, I will buy an Xbox to play Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Anyway. Best handheld of all time, maybe the Switch. Uh, I yeah. Don't know, would, you, would you put the DS second? The I DS might, is might the best the, selling. I might put the Game Boy second. See, that's the thing, because I would put the Game Boy Advanced ahead of the Game Boy. You're, you're, you're right. I changed my answer. Game Boy Advanced. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the DS is great, but and there's a lot of great games, but I can name more Game Boy and Game Boy Advanced games. Yeah. All right, more chat. Yeah. Game ba Game uh, Pass is compelling. Recent, I can't read. Uh, recently got it on PC. Yeah, Game Pass is another huge reason. I think Microsoft 
I mean, Sony's selling more consoles, and they're uh, and people want a PlayStation Five more than they want an Xbox. But I think Microsoft right. is really giving people uh, good reasons to get an Xbox, and people just aren't seeing it. Yeah, I think because you know Sony is currently riding that wave of goodwill from the PS4. But if they keep, you know, if they don't fix all the problems with the PS5 right now, I think pretty soon, like, that, people will turn. Yeah, no, I I, I think people just need to see the value in, in Microsoft soon. I, yeah. maybe, maybe Halo will give people a reason. I don't know. Uh, for some reason, this was filtered. Unspoken Killer says, I'm not worried about, but those... I think this is just bad english microsoft yeah. exclusive because they want that money and they'll give playstation 5 they'll give the same game xbox has hmm. most games are multi-platform so you yeah. can get whatever console but that's the thing is that it's a better experience to play it on an xbox series x than it is on a playstation yeah it's just easier to pop it in and go you uh, playstation's got some weird hoops you gotta jump through sometimes uh, but yeah. PlayStation has exclusive games that you can't play on Xbox. Yeah. That message got filtered out because of Bean A. <laughs> I don't know why. It, okay. it, it highlighted that and it was like, do you want to let this go? It says Bean. Yeah. Yeah. Jess the Vagabond says, Will, did you watch WandaVision? What are your thoughts? I did. Uh, saw the two episodes. Uh, I like it. It's definitely not... It's the most different thing Marvel has ever Marvel Studios has ever done. Cause it's it's not a typical like action adventure type thing. It's very weird and cerebral. Even though it's not like as weird and cerebral as like other things that it's trying that it's trying to imitate. It's definitely not your typical superhero fare. And I'm really interested to see how like it plays out it's very slow moving right now but i'm hoping that this next episode like starts to move the story forward so i saw a quote tweet today that was it quote tweeted british gq Mm -hmm. they had a thread of uh they like ranked the marvel movies I can't find the thread now for some reason, but they shit on every... Oh, here it is. I found it. They shit on every Marvel movie. (laughs) Every single one. Uh, So then why rank it? Every one of these tweets says something negative about the movie that it's talking about. And like really negative, not just like a little negative. And they specifically pointed out WandaVision, which is what people were mad about. It might be too early to judge the show at the time of writing. We're only three episodes in, but it's fair to say we're currently still waiting for takeoff when it comes to Disney Plus's first episodic MCU Fourier. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that Iron Man 2 lost its way after a very decent first film was a surprise, but in hindsight, it seems like it was too much too soon for the franchise. I mean, didn't, didn't people like Iron Man 2? People didn't like it as much as the first one. Mm-hmm. And there's a great debate uh, which is better, Iron Man 2 or Iron Man 3? The answer is three. Um, <laughs> I, I know that's a not popular opinion. Yeah. I don't know. I Like, if you're going to shit on all the movies, why bother ranking them? Following the trash fire that Iron Man 2 turned out to be, Iron Man 3 felt superfluous from the very beginning. That's what British GQ says. Yeah. And they deleted a tweet. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. They just had uh, nothing good to say about any of the Marvel movies for some stupid reason. Yeah. Did they say anything about Spider-Man? No, they didn't put it in a tweet. No, but the Spider-Man is homecoming is their number four. What's their favorite? Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Really? Oh, they said I mean, they they trashed Winter Soldier. I think they deleted that tweet. Yeah, Winter Soldier was like low to, on the list. They didn't have good things to say about Winter Soldier, which is uh, a great movie. Yeah. Or no, was it Civil War that they had bad things to say about it? 
I don't remember. Anyway, jump bag. Thanks for the prime sub. Hello, internet daddy, and hey, internet uncle. Hello, jump hey. bag. Thanks for the twelve months. I don't know who's who in that scenario. Uh, yeah, uh, flame boy Adam R. Hey, Will, did you play Scott Pilgrim? Uh, not yet, but I'm definitely going to get that. Thank you for reminding me. <laughs> I mean, you played it when it came out. I yeah, I played it when it came out. It was great. Um. I listened to the soundtrack a lot back in the day. Um, yeah. Thank you for reminding me to buy it. <laughs> Kav, Kav, Ka, 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 whatever. You know who you are. Adding in the <laughs> other handhelds, like from Sony, rank those handhelds. I am including those handhelds when I'm talking about <laughs> the Switch being the best and the Game Boy being up there. I don't think the Sony handhelds compare. I'm sorry. I know people love the PSP and the Vita and whatnot, but yeah, I don't think they compare to Nintendo's handhelds. No, they're great. I liked my Vita, but you know, then the Switch came out <laughs> <laughs> and it rendered it useless. People are saying that they're that we're gonna get a Sony handheld this year, and I just don't see it. I doubt it. it I don't. I don't think sense. Sony's gonna put out a handheld for a very long time. It doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Uh, I think we're good, Will. All right. Oh, Gold Shadow says, "Hey, Wolf Den, I love you both. I love you too, Gold Gold we Shadow. Love you too, buddy. Thank you all for being here and hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on twitchtv slash Den. If you can't make the show for any reason at all. We always put an archive version of it over on our YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast. So go over there and subscribe to that so you can watch it on demand whenever you want. And of course, if you'd rather listen to us rather than watch us, you can do that as well. We're also an audio podcast on Anchor.fm and your preferred podcast service of choice. Be sure to subscribe to us on any of those platforms and rate and review us because that helps us with placement on those respective stores. Guys, thanks for being here. I might stream tomorrow. Usually when I say might, it doesn't happen. But look out. Uh, I will definitely be here Thursday. Who knows what I'm going to play. I'm due to play some Mario Maker. Um, anyway, I appreciate you all being here. Guys, well, I'm going to raid Scootish, who is playing <laughs> Minecraft with Ian. Ian is the oh, editor, boy. one of the editors of the Clips channel. So go give them some hell. Yeah. Also, Scootish is a good time anyway. Uh, I will see you all later. Go over there and say hi. And uh, goodbye. Bye. Make sure you like this video if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, yeah. yeah, I appreciate you watching until the end. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye, bastards.